Welcome back. Tonight, 5,000 General Motors workers in Texas have joined the strike, bringing the total number of UAW workers on the picket line to around 46,000. This latest call to strike is for one of GM's most profitable plants, where workers make the Chevy Tahoe Cadillac Escalade and GMC Yukon. Now, just yesterday, the UAW called on Stellantis employees at the Sterling Heights assembly plant to walk out. That plant is also a very big moneymaker. And just today, Stellantis announced more than 500 stamping employees in Sterling and Warren are being laid off. Joining us to continue our conversation is Michael Martinez, UAW reporter with Automotive News. Thank you for being here with us today. So today matches the GM strike in 2019. And over the past days, the UAW has applied increasing pressure break all of this down for us what is the strategy behind the moves they're making well the strike has really entered a new phase to use uaw president sean fain's terms over the past couple of weeks we've seen the automakers sort of coalesce around the same type of offer around 23 percent wage gains some version of a cost of living adjustment different types of bonuses but now the union's trying to drag them even higher mm -hmm. to offer a little bit more because they feel there's more to be won. The automakers are saying they've kind of reached their limit, but based off things like GM's earnings today, where it still made billions of dollars, despite you know it being a, a bit of a loss compared to last year, the union thinks they can get more out of them. So they're striking their biggest, most profitable plants because they know that'll hurt. They know that proves they mean business. So maybe by doing that, the companies will offer more. Uh, so uh, Sterling Heights for Stellantis, Arlington, Texas for GM. Are the folks at Ford just shaking in their boots tonight? What do you think? I think you would have to be concerned about the Rouge for Ford, the Dearborn mm -hmm. truck plant, or the Kansas City assembly plant. Those sites both build the F-150. That's Ford's full-size pickup. Already its Kentucky truck plant went down about a week and a half ago, and that is its most profitable plant. Dearborn will be close behind, and that's something that Sean Fain's name dropped. He mentioned the Rouge yeah. on his Facebook Live appearance last week, so that could be a next target. And Michael, we're 40 days in. Who holds the power here? Is the UAW in the driver's seat? Is it the big three? There's certainly a lot of pressure on the automakers right now. We saw GM say that it's lost 800 million bucks so far, and it's going to lose 200 million more dollars every week. That's probably only going to go up after this Arlington news. But there is some pressure on the UAW, too. You have to start thinking about, is it worth it to continue to push for maybe another percent here mm. or there? When you have members who've been out on the picket line for over six weeks right. and those economic losses really start to get real right about now if you're a top earner this is just back of the napkin math but if you're a top earner you've missed out on something like 4500 5000 bucks by being out on that picket line so is it worth it to continue to push if you're just going to be making 500 dollars a week in strike pay do you think that the UAW will start to see some pressure from those workers on the picket lines as we get into the holiday season and the weather gets less and less hospitable to standing on a picket line? Yeah, I think so. You've seen the solidarity amongst the union workers really take hold these past few weeks. But recently you're seeing some start to waver a bit. I was out mm -hmm. on the picket line last week and they said, hey, maybe let us vote on a deal. We have good offers on the table. By and large, workers still want to hold out, but some are starting to question the strategy at least a little bit. Yeah. All right, and as we talk about the holiday season and inclement weather, what does the strike fund look like? Do they Can they withstand continuing this strike? For sure. It started off at about $825 million, and this strategy really has been about preserving that strike fund. It's still pretty healthy. We don't know for sure, but there's some third-party analyst reports saying it's still north of $700 million. So at this rate, they could last 30-plus weeks. I don't wow. think it'll last that long, but they could if they needed to. Now, let's say you've been on the picket line the entire time, maybe at the uh, Ford assembly plant here in Wayne. When they do hopefully come to an agreement and get that contract uh, ratified, would they get back pay, or is that something that would also need to be negotiated in the deal? You need to negotiate that, and you could also maybe see a bit of a higher signing bonus, too, as a nod from the companies to say, hey, you've been out a while, here's an extra couple thousand. Sure. All right. All right, and what comes next? Uh, what, what do you see happening um, as we continue with this strike and the, continue with the back and forth? I think you're going to see back and forth negotiations continue. We know the talks are very active with Stellantis and Ford right now. Same with GM, although they just struck Arlington. But the union's pushing for a little bit more on the raise side than the automakers are willing to give. Somebody's going to have to give here at some point. All right. Day 40 and yeah. the UAW strike continues. Automotive News reporter Michael Martinez, thanks for joining us. Thank you.